Nyo on Mint, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Um, given the horrific violence against the Rohingya in Myanmar, in recent years, your former boss, Aung San Suu Kyi, as you know, has been roundly condemned by the international community, by her fellow Nobel Peace laureates. She's been stripped of her honorary Canadian citizenship, of her Amnesty International Ambassador of Conscience Award, of her US Holocaust Museum Award. And in January, rather humiliatingly, the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, rejected her defense of Myanmar's actions and insisted that she act to protect the Rohingya Muslims from genocide. Was that the last nail in the coffin of her once hallowed reputation? Uh, I think because, you know, all the most of the international people live in the rumors, hearsay, and then second, you know, the version of the, the one-sided accusations. So that's why th that's the problem of the, uh, the in that our Western countryside situation. The, the very firstly, there was two communities from a kind, and you call the Rohingya, we call the Bengalese. So th that's a conflict in a la very long, you know, period of time. So I think uh, Don Santucci, uh, no, I'm not, you know, like protecting her, but uh, fair to say that she got to to defend the, the country and then to clear the, the Myanmar's name at the court. I don't think uh, that ver this is not a final verdict, but this is the only of uh, the, the ruling of the uh, professional measure at the ICJ. Nyo on Mint, just to be clear, uh, you dismissed what I described as uh, the criticisms of Western countries. Uh, a lot of those Nobel Peace laureates are not Westerners. Uh, they're actually from the Global South. And your own neighbours in Bangladesh have also been pretty scathing uh, in their criticisms of your government. By the way, you said that, you know, we call them the Rohingya and you call them Bengali. They call themselves Rohingya. Why won't you call them what they call themselves? So it's at the it's they brought from the the British you know colonial period. We never heard about the Rohingya, but you know I don't mind that you call them a Rohingya or Bengali. Okay. This is not the case. Okay. Well, aside from naming aside, you have seven hundred thousand. Uh, Rohingya displaced from their homes, uh, 10,000 people possibly dead, thousands of Rohingya women and girls raped, sexually assaulted, around 300 Rohingya villages burned to the ground. For the past few years, Aung San Suu Kyi and the Myanmar government denied any of this had happened. Uh, they suggested it was all fake news. Uh, and yet at the ICJ in December, Suu Kyi conceded for the first time that, yes, human rights abuses and war crimes may have been committed by the Tat Madar, by the Myanmar military. What changed? What happened was very last in 2017, August, when the, the Rohingya militant group, we call that the terrorist group, killed the, uh, the and attacked the uh, 30 police stations and one military base. So then, you know, people got the only hearsay and then, you know, only a one side accusation. This is a very good that the ICJ ruling is that we have a chance to clear that the that accusation but, but hold on that, hold on you say yeah. you say that the terrorist group committed atrocities and it's all one-sided that's not true amnesty human rights watch have all criticized uh, militant groups for their atrocities the un has said uh, that there were atrocities but what the un fact finders in 2018 said is that nothing these groups did warranted the response that came from the burmese military killing indiscriminately, gang-raping women, assaulting children, burning entire villages. The UN says none of this is justified by what any militant group may or may not have done. Are you saying it is justified to do this as part of some sort of war on yeah, terror? We have, a, we have a evidence that the Hindu 103 the Hindu group has been killed. It's a murder. I'm, I'm not disputing that. I'm saying, does that justify the Burmese military, quote, from the UN, killing indiscriminately, gang-raping women, assaulting children, and burning entire villages? That's not a proportionate response. In fact, the UN fact-finders accused the Burmese military of genocide, as have experts at the US Holocaust Memorial Museum, the International State Crime Initiative in London, and a unanimous vote in the Canadian Parliament in Ottawa. These are accusations of genocide here, Nyon Mint. 
I think I think this is the political accusation. It's Why is the U? What, 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 sorry, sorry, what political level. agenda is the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum pushing? What agenda do they have? Because you know, because, you know they, they they just join the bandwagon. What's the genocide bandwagon? They, which which bandwagon is that? I mean, like the, the whole international media media pointed out that media accused that, and then uh, that's the only. It's, Sorry, sorry, it's not the media. UN fact finders interviewed Rohingya women who have been raped and assaulted, and you're smiling and rolling your eyes. I don't understand. Is it not serious enough for you? Okay, it's at the if, if one case, or you said that the, the thousands of women been raped, they, they got a DNA test, and they when they were born, they got a like I know, the Burmese half, Burmese half. You know the Rohingyas. One you have that evidence. One Rohingya woman says, eyewitness says that when she tried to hold on to her 18-month-old baby, the child was lifted from her. They threw my baby into a fire. They just flung him in the fire. These are the kind of atrocities that are happening in Rakhine State that have been happening for years. You, that have been just only a witness, and that the, the only accusation. What does that mean? It's only an accusation. Yeah. It's a woman who lost her baby. Is she lying? I'm not really sure. God, God, uh, no. So when a, when, a, when, a, when a woman tells Amnesty International, uh, two soldiers came and tied my hands and legs together with rope. They dragged me to one side. Four of them took me and all four raped me. She's just lying to Amnesty International. I don't know, because if I, if I look at her eye, maybe it, uh, she was true or maybe she was not, she was lying. Because, you know, uh, because someone said that, okay, because United But Nations... this is not one woman, Neon Mint. Hundreds of Rohingya women and girls were raped. 80% of the rapes have been corroborated by UN fact-finders as gang rapes. The Burmese military are being held responsible for 82% of these gang rapes. And you're sitting here saying, I don't know, I have to look them in the eye. You, you're, you were an activist for democracy, yeah. Neon Mint. If somebody had said to you no, in the no, 80s, no, no, no. you're just it, making it up, it, how would you have felt? You feel that when, you, when I read that the US, the State Department report, Say that the uh, the the Rohingya woman was raped by the soldiers and surrounded by the hundreds of the soldiers. It was looked like a, the very, you know, the the third class Hollywood movie. More than that, it's a Hollywood movie. The UN fact finding report and Amnesty International Human Rights Watch. It's a Hollywood movie. So, because they want. What I don't get is every time I mention women being sexually assaulted, you smile. Forgive me. Why are you doing that? Come on. You know, I'm just like I know because I disagree with you. I mean, you're dismissing pretty serious allegations. You can disagree with me while taking seriously the fact that many women. I mean, here's a question for you: Why not allow in yeah, people into Rakhine State? Be, why not allow um, people something. into Rakhine State to see for themselves? Why, if you've done nothing wrong, if your government has done nothing wrong, why have they banned the UN Special Rapporteur from entering the country, banned the UNHCR from entering Rakhine State, banned international media from going and seeing for themselves? Sounds like you have a lot to hide for a government that's done nothing wrong. Yeah, you you might be true. That there is, uh, because, you know, the government handling this case, it's uh, they're very loosely, and then, you know, they have no... Oh, what, what I should say that the consequences, they, don't, they didn't care about the consequences. If I were the government in that position, I would bring that the other international media, the, like a U.S. facts finding, <clears throat> independence facts finding, to find it out. Let's talk about Aung San Suu Kyi, your former boss. Many would argue that, like a lot of people in Myanmar, she seems to have a problem with Islam and with Muslims. Uh, she once reportedly complained about being interviewed by a Muslim. In 2015, she purged her party, your party, of all Muslim parliamentary candidates. Uh, she's dismissed allegations of ethnic cleansing in Rakhine as Muslims killing Muslims. She even held a meeting with Hungarian far-right Prime Minister Viktor Orban, where they agreed, quote, that continuously growing Muslim populations posed a grave challenge. Is this bigoted, divisive, Islamophobic language really the appropriate language for a Nobel Peace Laureate to use? I think uh, maybe she got in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I don't think that uh, she was, she was uh, the anti-Muslim. Because the, our Burmese Muslim uh, and then, you know, agree with that, 
she doesn't have it, any intention to against or discriminate against the other religion. But our Burmese people, majority Buddhists, thought that she is against the Buddhists also. I think uh, she's a public. But when she goes and sees Viktor Orban and says there's a problem of, quote, continuously growing Muslim populations, that sounds pretty genocidal to me. Ah, uh, well, that's the... I don't... I, you know, the action at work. I think words are louder than action, or action is louder than words. Well, words lead to actions. Many people would say that violence is incited by leaders. If you hear, I mean, you're rolling your eyes, not but as, if, if you're a Muslim Rohingya refugee and you hear that your leader of your country is referring to you as a continuously growing population. By the way, it's only 4% of the Myanmar population is Muslim, uh, but it's a continuously growing Muslim population that poses a challenge, she says, standing next to a far-right nationalist leader like Viktor Orban. Aung San Suu Kyi was once a hero to liberals across the world. Now she's allied with far-right bigots like Victor Orban. Once you're the head of the state or the de facto leader, whatever, whenever you go, so you have to, your enemy or your friend, you have to shake him. That's at the. You country. can shake their hands. You don't have to make Islamophobic statements with them, do you? Do you think? Never, do you think the Muslims in Myanmar so are? Hold I, on, I'll I cannot, ask you a question. OK, I'll ask you the question, then, if you don't want to speak for her. Do you think Muslims in Myanmar are a problem and a challenge and a continuously growing challenge, as she said in Hungary, in a statement with the Hungarian government? Uh, I don't think we have a Muslim people. I really, because my close friends are Muslims, I'm really concerned that... I mean, the fact that your close friends are Muslims doesn't mean that your country doesn't have a Muslim problem. Uh, one last question. Do you think Aung San Suu Kyi's once legendary reputation and Myanmar's global reputation can ever recover from any of this? I think uh, after, you know, ICJ, you know, court, you know, uh, fighting, I think uh, we should clear the name and then we have to, uh, to look at the how we live together with the Muslim or Christian or Buddhist and that's a more important, more, you know, the cohesion and the more, you know, uh, they, they live together. Neil on Mint, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you.